Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 2. The entire runtime of this video will be centered around planning the first town, which I decided to try a new kind of infrastructure on. You will see what I mean when we get to it, but I think I did mention it at the end of the first episode, so we will put it into practice today. We will also set up a waste incinerator plant a bit farther away from the settlement, so the pollution wouldn't impact on the health of our people, and we will also place the first proper industry, namely the food factory, so we can turn the crops we grow into edible stuff. It won't be a complete job, there are still things missing, like monuments for loyalty, the garbage collection coverage will be a bit spotty, and we won't see any trees and bushes, since we will just barely manage to get things somewhat in order by the end. Before we get started, if this is not your first video from this channel, you already know what to expect. If you want to be kept up to date, please consider subscribing, and if you like what you see, leaving a like will also help letting me know what to focus on. But enough talking, let's get into it. Let's start with the incineration plant. For that, we will need to level the terrain out a little more. By the way, I have a suspicion that we might be encroaching on the oil field at this point. I can only guess, since I don't know the exact location, but it should start right around these parts. I think I will stop it around the big white line, that should be plenty enough space. So, we want the facility to be a bit further away from the town, so let's place the roads. For now, we are just going to burn our garbage. We might be able to sort out the gravel from construction waste, and maybe chemically treat the hazardous junk, but that's about it. We will deal with proper recycling once we have the necessary research done. Also, instead of dropping the rubbish off straight into the incinerator, we will place a small collection point next to it. As far as I can tell, there is no real advantage to this, but I have a feeling that later on it might be important, so might as well get into the habit of doing it. Alright, let's get started on the town itself. So here's what I had in mind for the roads. Since the update, the fastest way for people to get around is by using the asphalt footpaths. So we might as well build our town based around a footpath network. We will use the grid snapping feature to make sure the nodes around the road intersections are spaced evenly, with exactly one tile apart. Instead of relying on the mercy of the nodes generated by the game, we take control of it. This should result in a perfectly aligned and uniform pedestrian walkway network. I also decided to move the second street one tile closer to the other one. That will leave an odd number of tiles between them, which means we will have a center line we can use the grid snapping on. As always, we should start with a bus station, so we can take people out of town to the surrounding industries. We should also try to make sure the footpath grid is continued everywhere, so we will first place the intersections leading to the station, and then we will place the station itself. Get ready to see me doing this a lot in this episode. It's the only way to ensure the footpaths are kept uniform throughout the town. Maybe these two are a bit too close, so we can just have that crossing in between. That should cut down on the number of zebra crossings a little, so they aren't too dense. So, that's the bus station done. Let's place the supermarket next. 
should be fairly central, so let's place it here. Same as I did at the end of the last series, I will place a small meat freezer next to it, so we can expand the amount we can store quite a bit. Doing frequent meat deliveries to shops was always a big contributor to the amount of traffic in our towns before. To achieve this, we will need to move everything back a little bit, so some of the footpaths will need to be redrawn. Now we should have the space needed. Next comes the cinema. I already know where I want my apartments to go, so we will basically build around that place. I also wanted to see if we could maybe make the footpaths right around the intersections a bit less rectangular. We already have the nodes at the right places, so let's try to draw them a bit nicer. No luck. I will try to make it nicer between episodes, but for now, let's just stick to what we know works. Next comes the sports. Here, we had a lot more options than we used too. Since we don't need to worry about winter, let's start with a pair of open door football fields. They are not meant to be for proper matches, just for kids to play around in, so we will build two right next to each other. We won't get around to building them today of course, so I still might end up replacing one of them with something else, like a pair of tennis courts or something, so it's not so repetitive. But, they alone wouldn't be enough to satisfy the sports needs of everyone, so I also built an indoor facility, which should be able to house more people. Okay, I don't like this footpath arrangement. Let's just go back to the old one. We are done with the amenities, we can move on to the health and safety services. As always, we will start with the hospital, and work our way through the menu options. We can use that intersection to hook up too, so that is pretty convenient. Having all these tiny road and footpath sections will undoubtedly end up being a huge hindrance to our construction efforts, but as you might have guessed, we are not just going for efficiency in this playthrough, but looks too. We already have a big fire station at the highway connection, so I don't think I will bother building another one in town. Which means we have the educational facilities next. As usual, childcare is a big deal, since ideally we would like to have both parents in the workforce. For now, Let's see how far we can go with a medium-sized kindergarten, and we can just build more if needed.
Next, a school. Let's put it next to the waterfront, so kids can look out the window and fantasize about being outside on the beach, instead of being stuck in a Soviet-era study room. Since the research update, we have even more reason to go for higher education right away. Same as always, we have this neat small-sized technical university. We will also build a party HQ of course, since the technologies we can research there are also incredibly important, like loyalty and distribution, but I really wanted to take care of the geological survey tech, so we can discover the location of our actual cash cow, the oil deposit nearby. And I also wanted to break up the monotony of the grid we've been building until now, so let's do a small diagonal section here, just behind the hospital, and we can place the university there. Trying to adhere to this new spacing convention takes quite a bit of work, but I do think it's worth the effort. We have a nice little green patch next to the hospital, so we can use that for a small park or something later. Anyways. The university. That's what this was all about. It does kind of fit next to this diagonal road, but let's just put it next to the residential area. We will have many more opportunities to fill that place in. Maybe with even more apartments. Next, the police station. I learned my lesson from the last series. We really shouldn't rely on the small version, since once we start to build up the population numbers, we will need the capacity granted by the big one. Of course, the justice system isn't complete without the courthouse. For this one, I do think the smaller version is enough, and we can build the big one later. To cap off the justice buildings, let's just place a small prison near the edge of town, and be done with it. Same as before, we will likely build the big one once this one is full. Right behind the police station should be perfect. Okay, the road is a bit uncooperative. Let's just connect it to the main street like this, we don't really need footpaths this far out of the center. The last thing we need from this menu is the technical services. That's where all the garbage trucks will go. And that's pretty much it for the most important service buildings. Before we start placing the apartments, let's place a couple monuments, just so loyalty isn't complete garbage at the start.
This little corner is perfect for Uncle Lennon to look over the center of town. We can fill in those leftover areas with trees and bushes. Let's just place one more thing, maybe with a bit more range than the statue. The best thing of course would be the Red Star Monument, but we cannot build that without some research. Alright. Time for the residential neighborhood. Out of all the different houses we can build at the start, we can only really go for one of them, since that's the only one that has a good enough housing quality to it. As usual, I would like to keep our people happy, and housing quality plays a big role in that equation. Trying to place them too close to the existing footpaths does end up giving us a collision error, but I know we should be able to fit them in. We can just take out the paths, place the buildings, and then redraw them. That should do the trick. And of course, we are using the building mirroring to ensure the buildings fit together somewhat nicely. This is more than what we really need at the start. I forgot to turn off the citizen buying option right now, but we will have plenty of time before they are built, so I think I will remember to turn it off before then. Alright, time to start drawing the inner walkways. Thankfully, we have plenty of room between the houses and the footpaths for some trees. This time around, I won't really worry about blocking the view of the residents windows too much. I did look around in Google Maps, studying different communist era neighborhoods in different towns, and they are always completely surrounded by trees. So that's what we will go for this time around. Well, not too dense of course. We will try to have neatly spaced out rows of trees next to the footpaths. I was really tempted to go for asphalt paths right away, but that would have been a bit of an overkill, we have a lot of them, and building all would take ages. Let's just go with gravel for now, and upgrade them as we go along. We should have enough redundancy in the network to accommodate it later. What we need next is a way to pool the garbage output of these buildings into a central collection point, and that's where these rubbish bin places come in handy. They have a relatively short range, so we should try to find a place that covers as many buildings as possible.
All right. That should do it for the most part. Not the most riveting part of the video, but it's part of the process. Next, we need to take care of the power. For that, we will need a transformer. The high voltage connection is pointing toward the border, since that's where the big cables will come from. Sadly, we cannot use the 18 megawatt lines until we research them, so we will need to do this with the 15 megawatt version. This means we won't be really plan this to be permanent. I would like to include one of those new line splitters that can deal with priorities in where the power goes, so once we unlock the 18 megawatt pylons, we will build one of those too. I didn't even bother with a high voltage switch. Maybe I will add one in the next episode, just in case, but this really is not the final setup. In fact, now that I think about it, we really should add one. We will need it to serve as a temporary source of power while we replace these lines in the future. I think we can cover the entire town with two substations just fine. It's a bit awkward to place it with all those footpaths around, but we should be able to do it. Nice. These lines have no breaks in them, so we don't have those ugly switch boxes littering the surface. Next, we should start thinking about some industries. As I've said in the intro, we will go for the food factory first. First, we should try to build a bus stop that can reach the garbage incinerator. That's our measuring stick for this one. I didn't really think about the fire station, but we can deal with that with either upgrading the roads, or by building footpaths, so it should be fine. Okay. With transport sorted, we can start the actual factory setup. It will be extremely simplistic. Just a silo for grains, the factory, and the small warehouse for the finished goods. Nothing fancy. Just to be sure we can fit it in, let's start with the silo. We will use the old one. The farm is so close to it, we can just use trucks to deliver the crops to it. No need to worry about trains for this one.
And lastly, we just need a warehouse to store the fresh bread. For this one, we will build a warehouse with a built-in train platform. I have a feeling that this place will serve as the source of food for multiple places, not just the first town. Nice and simple. Nothing too complicated. Of course, we will need a source of electricity, so a substation is required. Let's just make sure it can cover everything we need it to cover, and we can hook it up to the transformer. I think I didn't place it close enough to the fire station, so we might need to move it, but let's worry about that later. At this point, we were getting pretty close to the end of our timer, and I didn't want to get into anything big, only to leave it half finished between episodes, so we will do a bit of fast forwarding, and when I get bored of that, we will do a bit of tree planting around town. I also double checked, that we had all the important roads ready for upgrading to gravel in town. And we do, except for the substation connections, but those can stay as dirt. So, let's just pass the time by placing some trees in the town. As usual, we won't go crazy with it, just a bunch of spaced out trees, all parallel with roads and footpaths. We find places where they can fit in, come up with a relatively even spacing, and plant them. Again, nothing crazy. We don't want a forest, just some shade for the pedestrians as they walk around town. There are spots where we cannot squeeze the trees in, so those will have to stay barren unfortunately. But trees aren't just for the residential district, we should also place some around the services too. Now, I did place some poplar trees in front of the Lenin statue, but in hindsight, that might have been a bad idea. They are very tall trees, so they might block the view of the monument. I think I will replace them with some bushes in the next episode. The ones I placed to the sides of it are fine, but the ones in that small clearing in front of it will need to go. This little space can be a bit more dense I think.
Again, nothing crazy, just something that looks a bit more natural than the more cultivated rows we've been placing. And I think that's enough tree planting for now. Once they are all grown up, we can better judge where we need to do more planting, but we should be okay. We can also fill in the rest of the area with some of the new bushes that have been added to the game in the new update. They can be a lot smaller than the old bushes, which is perfect for fillers, since they don't tend to grow over the surrounding infrastructure. And yeah, looking at the building progress, the drawback of this footpath network is that it's a lot more dense, and it has a lot of small sections, all of them having to be built one by one. Things would go a lot faster if we did it the old-fashioned way. And here's another example of the fast-forwarding messing with things. We had a truck trying to deliver asphalt to the bus stop, but couldn't drop it off because I was using the speed-up feature. There is a reason why the developers kept it a secret until someone stumbled onto it not so long ago. And I think this is where we will leave things for today. We did all right all things considered. I think some of the next episode will be spent in fast forward, just so we can get through the town building quicker, and I might add a few more facilities to it. We should add a party HQ, so we can do the distribution research at the very least, which is kind of important. We will also need to think about setting up a permanent construction hub, which I yet to find a place for, but we have a lot of space, so that shouldn't be a problem. And we should also start laying out the rail network. I completely forgot to build the town station, but we have time, so I'm not all that worried about that. We will still use buses for the local industries, like the food factory, but anything farther away, I will try to use trains instead. Anyways, if you haven't done it already, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel, and leaving a like would also let me know that this video was worth making. If you feel that it was good enough, and you can afford it, please consider going to my Ko-fi page, which you can find in the description, and donate an amount that you feel is appropriate. And if you did like what you've seen, there should be links to some of my other videos and playlists on the screen. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.